Good morning everyone. So what I'd like to show you today is some applications of calculus. And the first one we're going to discuss today is kinematics. So let's first discuss motion in a single line. Let's assume this is my origin and I'm going to the right. And this is my final position. As we have been doing so far, as always, x is positive to the right. Now let's say that I start counting time as soon as I've started this motion. So I could argue that the position given by s is a function of time. So when I start my motion here at the origin, my time would be zero and then I would reach at point p at another time. So I can simply say that my displacement is a function of time and time is equal to zero or positive. We can call this a displacement function. And it's usually given. Now, if my displacement at any time is larger than zero, then my object is to the right. So displacement positive, we're assuming that x is positive to the right. So if x is greater than zero, then my object is going to be to the right. Obviously, if instead it's less than zero, then it's to the left. So if my position is negative, then my object is to the left of my origin. And if at any time it's zero, then object is at origin. So really simply here, let me give you a displacement function. And let's say that this is equal to t squared plus 2t minus 3 centimeters. So at any given time, I can just substitute time in this equation and I can find the position of my object. So you can even try yourselves what would be position at beginning, what would be position at time equals 1, position at time equals 2, position at time equals 3, and position at time equals 4. So you can just put those numbers back into your equation. So let's take a look at our displacement function again. t squared plus 2t minus 3. So if t is 0, this will be negative 3 centimeters. Now, if time is 1, this would be 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 3. So that's 0. At time equals 2, right? So s of 2, um, it would be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 3, which gives us 5 centimeters. And if you keep doing that, you would find S3 to be 12 centimeters and S4 to be 21 centimeters. Remember that displacement is a position. So the units should be centimeters, uh, meters, millimeters. It depends on what you're given. In this case, my function was admitted to give displacements in centimeters. So that's why my results are like that. Also, if we take a look at each of those, we could um, say if they are to the right or to the left of my origin point. So, for example, I begin my motion to the left of the origin because this number is negative. Then I go through the origin when time is equal to 1, my displacement is 0. And then it only goes positive from that. So, if I if I could animate this, right, at time equals zero, my object would be a negative three centimeters, then time equals to one, it would be at zero, and then it's moving to the right, right, because then it's five, 12, and 21, obviously not up to scale, but that's what's happening. Now, following up from displacement, if we take two times, two different times and we calculate a gradient 
in what would be a displacement time graph, that gradient would give us an average value. If the graph you're discussing is a displacement time graph, then the average would be an average the the gradient would be an average speed. If now let's say you could even have the same graph. Now let's say that you pick a point and you get your your derivative at that point. So that's a tangent line. This is a, this is a derivative. Right, so this one will give us an instantaneous speed. And the same thing would happen if we had, instead of a displacement time graph, if this was a velocity time graph, then instead of an, av of an average speed, we would have an average acceleration. And also this second graph here, same thing. If I was getting the tangent, if I was getting the derivative, um, it would not be the instantaneous speed if this was a velocity time graph. It would be an instantaneous acceleration. Now let's say, what if we're given an equation and we're asked for both the average speed and the instantaneous speed, how would we calculate those? So let's take a look at one example. So consider the same displacement function that we had on the previous example. So t squared plus 2t minus 3. And let's say that we're asked for the average speed from time equals to 1 second to time equals to three seconds. And also, we're asked for an instantaneous speed at time equals to one. Now notice the difference, that when we're calculating an average speed, we will need more than one point, because we're getting a chord. When we're calculating an instantaneous speed, we only need one point, since this is a tangent line, so we only need one point of the graph. So average speed is actually simple. That's what we have been doing loads of times so far. So it's the gradient, right? So delta s, change of position over change of time. That's rise over run, right? If we take this displacement here, that's our delta t, and this height would be our delta s. So delta s, that's the second position minus the first position over second time minus initial time, final minus initial, both of them. Right, so s2, in this case, it would be um, time equals three. So when time is equal to three, our position back then was 12, right? So s3 equals 12. What about s of 1? s of 1 was 0. So when we do this, s2 is 12, that's the second position, minus s1, which is our first position, 0, over second time, which is 3, minus initial time, which is 1. Everything on top is measured in centimeters, and everything down below in seconds. So I would expect this result to be in centimeters per second. Now, if I divide 12 by 2, I would get 6 centimeters per second. That would be our average speed from time equals 1 to 3. What about the instantaneous? So to calculate our instantaneous speed, we can get the derivative of our position of our displacement function. So what would be the derivative of this? So that's fairly easy because that's just um, some powers. So t squared will become 2t 
it would be 1 here, I don't have to write that down, and plus 2t, t will drop to t to the power of 0, so that's simply 2, 2t two plus 2. Um, and that's, this is the instantaneous velocity. So using this, we can find the velocity at any point. So what would be v of 1? That's what we're being asked, simply. So if we put 1 here, when time is equal to 1, velocity will be 2 times 1 plus 2. So this is 4. Now, since my original function was written in centimeters as units, this will be centimeters per second, just like what we had here. So we can find out that our average speed was larger. Why? Because our object is in fact accelerating. All right. Um, we we could see that from the previous um, items that we saw, the, the positions that we saw in the previous slide. And now something that you could think about is how to get the accelerations from those equations. And again, it's fairly simple. If you, but it depends if you want to calculate the average acceleration or the instantaneous acceleration. And let's see how this goes. So just like the instantaneous velocity was the derivative of the position of the displacement function, we can also get our acceleration as a derivative of our velocity function, which is a second derivative of our displacement function. So again, let's carry on with the same example. My displacement function was t squared plus 2t minus 3 centimeters. All right, so let's say that we want to find out the average acceleration from time equals 1 to 3 again and also the instantaneous acceleration from no um, at time equals 1 all right fairly simple now for the average we will do something that we have done like numerous times before um, we will get the acceleration as simply a rise of a run that's the gradient so we'll have a final velocity minus an initial velocity over final time minus initial time okay we can also see this um, like v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 right and 2 is the second 1 is the first if we're doing from time equals 1 to 3 we could um, just to keep this adequate to our terminology here we could have v at 3 minus v at 1 over 3 minus 1 right and we could just write this down straight away v of 3 again if this is our displacement um, function what would be our velocity function and what would be our acceleration function so our displacement is 2 squared plus 2t minus 3 centimeters our velocity function is the derivative of this so that's 2t plus 2 and our acceleration function would be simply 2 our acceleration is constant and as as I've mentioned before our object is accelerating so that's why when we get the average velocity it will seem to be larger than the instantaneous one because whenever we get more points um, we are going to get a gradient which is larger because this it's actually your object is speeding up so if we get a tangent line the slope will be less than if we get a gradient Right, because this, those points are always going to be higher. This, this is just because of the quadratic which we were given as our displacement function. 
But anyway, so the units here, centimeters, centimeters per second, and centimeters per second squared. Now that we have all those equations, we can calculate our average acceleration here. And since our acceleration will be given by V3 minus V1, V3, what would be V3? Now, if V is given by 2t plus 2, V3 would be 2 times 3, which is 6 plus 2. So that's 8 centimeters per second. What about V1? Well, V1, when t is 1, there's going to be 2 times 1 plus 2. So that's simply 4 squared centimeters. Oh, sorry, centimeters per, per second. Right, so if we make this difference here, we would have 8 minus 4 over 3 minus 1, which is 2. So 4 minus 8 minus 4, that's 4 over 2, 2 centimeters per second. And look how cool is this? This that we have calculated, so this acceleration that we have calculated was calculated just um, differentiating, right? So this is basically a derivative. And we have calculated our acceleration both through the derivative and through the average. And we have found the same value. And in this case, this would be expected simply because the acceleration is constant. So it doesn't matter if you're getting a a derivative here, um, since your acceleration is constant, both will give you the same result. Because it doesn't matter if you're getting your acceleration using two points, since it doesn't change, you will always have the same value. And most importantly, for those of you, especially those of you who don't study physics very much on IB, now keep a close eye, keep a close eye on the units, right? Everything that I've done in this video is using centimeters per second, which is not using centimeters, um, centimeters per second, centimeters per second squared, which is not always the units that are used in the exam. It's much more common to see things in meters um, than in centimeters, but you may also find things in kilometers. And using the same principles, you can even work with imperial systems like inches, feet, yards, and, and all of those. But you're not expected to know those for the IB. So don't worry too much. Uh, what I would suggest is if you find any problem um, for any university that you're probably trying to study for, if you find problems in which the units are not the units that you're used to, just, just keep them. Unless you're told to, to express your results in another unit, just keep the units that you have. So if you're given something in feet per minute, feet per second, just keep feet per second. Unless um, you want to have a better, under better understanding, it's not a, uh, an exam, it's not something you're being assessed, and you want to have a better understanding of the underlines of how, how fast that actually is, and centimeters or meters or kilometers per hour will probably give you a better understanding because you've got some references like cars and and anyway all right so that's it regarding the first part of kinematics so well a while ago i showed you some um th thinking process regarding displacements and we have realized that if our displacement was less than zero then we're to the left of origin. If, okay, this is zero and this is origin, right? If it's equal to zero, then we are at the origin. And if it's larger than zero, then we are to the right of the origin, right? That's simple. What about velocities? Some of you may argue, what's the difference between speed and velocity? They are different things, but they are related. So velocity is a vector, and speed is a scalar. 
So speed is a value. It has no direction whatsoever. Velocity has a direction. So if our velocity is positive in, in a one-dimensional problem, so we're only on a line, right? If our velocity is to the right, it's larger than zero, right? If our velocity is to the left, it's less than zero. If our velocity is zero, then it's pointing nowhere. It's you could have the situation, for example, when you're you're moving to the right and then you're accelerating to the left, and then you will have to, to go through v equals zero, but you're stopped. So when your velocity is larger than zero, then you're moving right. When it's equal to zero, you're not moving. And when it's less than zero, moving to the left. Now, what about the acceleration? Acceleration is slightly different. Well, when the acceleration is positive, it simply means that V is increasing. Now, what about when acceleration is zero? Well, V is constant. Your velocity is not changing. And when your acceleration is negative, then V is decreasing. Notice that when acceleration is zero, you might have some maximum speed or some minimum speed, right? So notice that just because it's a derivative which is equal to zero. And this also means something similar. When velocity is zero, you might have some minimum or maximum in your displacement. So when this is zero, it always means, it might mean a maximum or minimum of the previous one. And why do I see that it might? Well, let's take an example like this one here. So let's say that our displacement, displacement function is simply t. Very simple. Right? So if I ask you um, what is my displacement at any time, you can find it simply by, well, let's say time equals 2, that would be 2, time equals 5, that would be 5, time is equal to 1,000, that would be 1,000. Right? So that's fairly simple. Now the point is, what would be our instantaneous velocities? So our velocity function would then be given by the derivative of this one. Now, if we take the derivative of time in respect to time, we'll have one. So here what we have is that our velocity is constant. So our object is moving forwards and at each second, let's say, it's going forwards with a, this is, yeah, so uh, with a one unit. If this was, let's say, centimeters, then this would be one centimeter per whatever second, right? Or meter per second, whatever. Um, depends on the unit that you have there. But here, it's simply it's simply moving with a constant speed. So every at every second, it moves one to the right. So what's the acceleration? Zero. If we take the derivative of this we can see that it's zero, right? Um, we have no variable t anymore. So this is constant. Whenever we derive this, we get the uh, differential that's gonna be zero. If we take any gradient of this function as well, if you're asked, for example, for calculating average acceleration, it would also be zero. Because if you take any delta v, since all velocities are 1 at any given point, that would be 1 minus 1. So delta v is always 0. So acceleration will always be 0. Now, just applying to this problem, again, speed is not the same thing as velocity. So when we have calculated in this example velocity to be equal to 1 and constant, 
our velocity is 1 and since it's positive it's to the right again our velocity is 1 to the right okay the unit here I have assumed that it was centimeters per second so 1 centimeter per second to the right when I say velocity it's a vector so I, I have to express direction usually when our velocity is given by an equation like this one the sign will tell us if it's going to the right or to the left so it will express a vector nevertheless now speed is the magnitude of that vector so even if your object is going at one centimeter per second to the left or if your objects go in one centimeter per second to the right both speeds are the same the velocities are not the same but the speeds are the same so the value the magnitude the length of those vectors would be the same however the directions are not so the velocities are not the same